31st of June. We're on the South Coast Road going to Port Edward. We're following some netters. And that's probably one of your good indicators to see where there's action. And then obviously the various social media platforms. Now, you guys know on ASFN, we'll do our best to uh, actually uh, keep you guys in the loop of where the fish are. We've got Jace that's on top of the sods because he, he's got one of his own netting teams. And uh, we'll be giving you regular feedback on, on actual information, not hearsay or um, maybe there's saws there or some, you know, <laughs> red eye pockets or mackerel pockets. The guys get very excited and stuff. Uh, we're following these netters to see where they're going. They may be, you know, at this stage of the game, it's very early days. So uh, we don't know if they've reached our shores. There's a lot of reports that there's pilot shoals and pockets coming through, but we haven't actually physically seen them. So we don't know how true it is. So we're following these guys, they might also just go to a spot, a central spot where they can hang around and wait for information or a good lookout area where they can see the boat trolls uh, coming through and maybe they, when they get in range they can have a shot at it. Yeah, make sure you subscribe to our channel through this period and hit the bell notification button to be updated. When we upload something you immediately get notified um, and it can keep you in the action. So if you're interested in the sardine run, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Officially, the sardine run has started in Port Edward. We're down here at Port Edward. We took a chance, drove down, saw some netters, followed them. Now, I just spoke to Jace as well. They did net, um, some of the guys did net 80 crates here and some a bit less. So it's just a bit far off. There were big shoals here on the right now. Yeah, all the way to Splash Rock. And then they're moving into the bay. Some smaller uh, pockets of the pilot shoals are coming into the bay here. Yeah? Very exciting, you can see there's quite a few netters on the beach. Uh, sharks boards here, so I take it they've lifted the nets. I don't know, maybe today or maybe earlier already. Uh, there were a lot of speculation yesterday and some uh, spottings of bait shoals. But uh, we can confirm it's all sorts. They actually netted them. There's uh, still big stretches of pockets running here at Port Edward, quite a bit. And some pieces broke off close enough for the netters to net. They need a uh, they need those pockets to be about, I think, 300 meters and to be able to net them. viewers let us know there's some pockets by to 20 we just saw netters in uh, Ibadin Pamula area uh, we saw netters chasing past we'll see where they turn off maybe they turn off at Pamula and uh, so that's that's part of the sardine run we'll just run behind them and see where they go we've been looking for birds all this whole morning there were some birds working here we went down uh, they disappeared, so it wasn't a big bait shoal, could have been anything. But the 1 at 20, I believe, has been going for, for a little while already. It doesn't look like a big shoal, but we'll see where the netters are going. So we'll have a look see it's Saturday, the 5th of June.
The boats had to launch at Pamula, but there was salt stuck behind the rock at Banana Beach. So from Pamula we drove down and when we arrived at Banana Beach, the first net was busy being pulled out. It wasn't a lot of swords, but it's extremely difficult with the dirty water to find them and put the net around them at the right time. There's a lot of hard work guys, a lot of preparation and not easy at all. Guys, we got some fish with Del Sarts here at Banana Beach. We got a guest angler, Gauri. Gauri, right? That's brought some dowry for us. <laughs> <laughs> so we can get some fish. And we're going to get some baits out. Uh, I'm going to show the gentleman how to hook up a sardine. Now, when you got fresh sardines like this, the bellies are still intact. Try not to damage your bellies. If you damage your belly, expose it to the small little fish. They'll come and feed and peck on this as quick as possible. So we're going to keep them as whole as possible. Simple, there's two ways. One, you can go from the bottom, through the head, or through the eye. So I basically do this, and bring it up there at the strongest part of the head. And that keeps the sardine whole. You can throw this sardine as, just as, as is, is single, as is. and you'll get a pull. Right? But we're going to go for a shark, we're going to put a bigger bait, so we're going to turn. The next one, I'm going to turn through the eye, right? All that does is makes me put the sardine back to back, right? And the last one, I'm going to go through the lip again. So that's basically our bait. A little bit of cotton to streamline it. and a little bit of cotton to protect the bellies. Hook is nice and proud. That's all we need, right? When you throw this to a streamline, you'll get a couple of extra meters. Sometimes that's all you need. Yeah, guys, this is my first throw with this salt ego. I've never thrown it before. So, like they say, how for make a badger. But this is a brilliant breeze. That's how it performed in the past. Now, even though the bay wasn't looking that nice, it does no harm putting a bait out. You never know what's lurking in the front here in the sardine run. There's no rules when it comes to the season. And then all of a sardine, the boat drops a net as the shoal lifts up and almost comes around the corner. Now yeah, guys, uh, joint effort here uh, by these and GS Fisheries. Our fish is far on the back line behind some rocks. Uh, we joined the team and took a shot. The fish is in the bag. Now it's basically just landing the fish. It's sitting, look at it, it's looking sitting perfect in the pockets. So basically just landing the fish and getting onto the beach. And again, this net got stuck on some rocks at the bottom of this bay. And the guys have to think quick to try their best to recover it. A small hole in this net can mean losing all the sardines. Phew, a lot of hard work to get that fish. But yeah, I had to save the day there. The fish was 
stuck on the rock, got to the bottom and just lifted it up. It's out. It's a very small percentage of sardines that gets netted during a sardine run, even when the weather is perfect, conditions are perfect and the sods are here for a month. proved to be progressively better and the hopes were high to see what happens on Sunday. The first net was out early and this time at Pumula Beach. Again there was a large shoal of sardines that sat behind the point and timing had to be perfect that when they move into the bay and to the surface to make sure they get the net around. Yeah, we're down here at Pumula and a nice big pocket of fish came around the corner. There are three boats in the water and I managed to get into the third shot and I think I had a third time lucky because one guy missed, one guy got fish. But we got a decent net, I'll say about 150 crates. A lot of hard work, the current screaming, the brown water, reef, sharks. So every bit of danger you can think of is there now. The guys work extremely hard. A couple of guys could have lost their lives for sardine today because of the traditional conditions and the brown water, the rocks. But yeah, we came up trumps and one beautiful net this morning, as you can see. So, it's going to be another two or three hours to float this and then, then we try some fishing and look for some sharks. Guys, the sods, they're so nice for me. And we're going to buy tight now. Fresh bait. How's it guys? Yeah, action here at Pumula. I'm here with uh, Kiran, right? Yeah. Kiran from Toji. Uh, you dropped this bit how far? About 400 meters. Yeah, 400 meter drop, you got a pull. Looks like a decent fish. He's got the right tackle as you guys can see. Proper yeah. sardine on tackle. We are ready, yeah. Uh, what do you expect? Is it going to be a grey? Hopefully. Hopefully a decent grey. Uh, that's good man, that's good. So yeah, finally action picked up here. So someone's eventually tight. There's more rods in the water going in now. So we all hope we all can go tight just like you. So all the best. Man, thanks, man. I'll see you in the fishing room. Okay, cool.
From early morning, I could see the sardines being smashed in front of Hibberdeen and further down south. We arrived at Hibberdeen Beach and the nets were already on the beach. And of course, we made our way to the rocks as soon as possible, as you could just see the shark action from early morning already. The sardines were full up, right in the back line behind the rocks. You could literally lob a bait into them. One of the boats had difficulty with its outboard and Jace was quickly to jump in to go and assist them. Okay guys, when that fish, I had to tighten up, you saw that it was getting closer to the drum there. And uh, looks like you know, something could have swum in it. Uh, first time I play with a Sol Saltiga 2020 and <laughs> it's got the power, no problem. There we go, another one. Like us Told you. Guys. That's great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Smash guys, you know, there's fish uh, swimming into your line, you fighting fish across. Fingers crossed we landed. I've got some good uh, support, some good moral support here, so I'm sure I'm going to land it. Hey, Andre? And as these baits were dropped, it was between 3 and 15 minutes, and the guys just went tight. Yeah, guys, so I dropped it. Not even, I would say, 30 seconds, and I got to pick up. My drag is quite tight here because I've got about 500 meters of j 65 pound. Full length. So, yeah. Okay, guys, as you can see, Miami here at Ibedin with the swords coming up close from early this morning. Uh, sharks with the nets when they're netted, uh, smashing. Jace is in, Dre is in, another guy's in, and they tangled, unfortunately, and then another in as well. Um, I haven't put a bait out again. I had Jason's rod when he swam to, to help the boat. Uh, but, uh, and his rod went, but the leader not pulled on that, uh, on that fish. But it took it way down to the ground. Some big graves around. Andre did a great job of getting out of the crowd and getting his fish to move left. Jace did the same by getting his fish to go right towards a smaller bay on the right hand side. But it wasn't long and there were six guys on at the same time. It wouldn't be clever to put more baits out while so many guys are fighting fish. And 
the plane just fits very well. Andre was the first to land a nice dusky of 260 centimeters in excess of 270 kilos on the grinder. Job well done. How's it guys? So yeah, I dropped the bed about an hour and a half ago and I got my first grade for the starting run. Back up. Unfortunately, Jace has got cut off by another angler and most of the fish on the point were lost. When we left, there was only one guy still on. We quickly received news of a pocket stuck in between the rocks at Cracker Bay and it wasn't possible for us to get there quickly. But through the courtesy of Aloe's resort, they allowed us to park there and we managed to get down to the bay quickly. Five minutes guys, that's how long it took me to land the fish. <laughs> when we arrived there, Jace already landed a spinner shark of over 100 kilos in five minutes. The sharks were wild in the shore break and you can literally choose which one you want to hook by just lobbing a bait in front of them. Unfortunately, with all the action and all the sharks swimming around, it is not easy to keep them on. Landed all by himself, the second fish of the day, lovely grey of 267 centimetres. You 
Using the right tackle, they decided to lock up on this fish completely so that it doesn't get to the back reef and stays in the bay so that he can try and land it as quick as possible. He managed to keep the fish pretty much on the lip, but this fish was so green that it, it still had the good fight in it for quite some time on the lip. And I just love to He managed to land that fish in 35 minutes and the rest of the team moved to Pamula where there was a lot of action. Kumaran was already there and managed to land a reggae and another smaller dusky. Great footage of shoals, apparently at Ifafa with thousands of sharks coming. Have a look at this. Credit to whoever took it, unfortunately we don't have the details. On some of the other beaches, just north of Pamula, you get Governor and Chris Aest had a lot of fun getting a total of four big duskies and you get with a lovely tiger shark. Good morning guys, we're down here at Hibidin, uh, splash rock or spray rock and as you can see a nice big shoal of sardine moving slowly north. We've been watching a fish from Pumula this morning, we've been on the water. I just got out uh, to come up in the viewpoint to have a look at it. Moving very slow north and the only place you can net it now is Hibidin. So that's about a K down the beach. We'll have to sit and wait for it. This morning there was two nets at Uvongo. So there was some fish up there but as you can see those shoals have got shark activity and game fish in it a lot of chases in those shoals so let's wait and see hopefully we get a shot in the next hour or so best part of the sardine run consists of driving up and down looking for shoals and waiting for them to line up in the right areas to be able to net them only a few selected areas allows the netters to put a net around them Team V's and Moonlight is committed to stick to the rules of releasing all bycatch. As we saw several days over the sardine run, having netted some tuna, garrick and other game fish. On the occasions where the sharks move close enough for the casting anglers to target them, it is quite condensed and you have several challenges of other anglers on top of each other as well as sharks and game fish swimming around the shoal that can very easily allow you to lose your fish. For us as shore anglers, we keep a close eye on the netting to find the fish, but especially one of those days where one of those nets might open, allowing thousands of sardines to wash into certain bays, resulting in several fish being caught there over the next day or two. The netters are quick on trying to salvage as much as possible, but it only takes a few hundred little fish. 
to squash into the bay and the game is on. On this day, many of the local community were able to help themselves to sardines as well, as in excess of 300 crates got spilled. Alright guys, down here at Sharks Bay, Umula. 120 minutes now. I encountered some problems with my reel. Where when I was, when I had the guys pull my reel, they spooled the bait on too loose. So they formed a loop and I had to stop this fish dead in its tracks and uh, get a bit of line back. Cash is there, landing his fish now. Nice graze. The following morning, Kumaran and Cash was early on the beach. Getting out as all those salts from the previous day that washed into this bay sucked out at Sharks Bay to the back. This being an obvious good spot to target some of those bigger sharks. I'm really worried about this bank. It's a shallow, shallow, shallow bank. It's a wedding bank. Sharks Bay has got a few scattered rocks and it's important to know where they are to ensure a safe landing of your fish. We do our best to prevent the loss of a fish, like being cut off. Fighting these monsters takes patience. Gaining centimeters at a time, Kumaran did a superb job as he had a problem of fluffed braid on the inside of his reel, only allowing him to use half his capacity and he had to lock up his drag to maximum to prevent this fish taking him further down into his braid. Well, what happened on this fish was spectacular. When grabbing some of these wind on leaders on the braided part, we'll make it part. And that's exactly what happened. But Ketch managed to get hold of the leader in time. And we all jumped in and leaded this fish. And it's not long after I went tight, the jock went tight as well. It's absolute tremendous amount of pressure we put on these fish to keep them gliding sideways and every now and then gain a bit of line. It wasn't long and Ketch was on again after losing his fish earlier on the lip. Unfortunately for Kish, the steel broke as he got the fish on the side, so couldn't take photos as it was a quick release. Unfortunately, Jock's fish managed to get around the rocks on the left. We had to fight this rip current with almost every fish we hooked, as they are intelligent enough to use those rips. I managed to keep mine close enough to literally bump its nose and turn away. Unfortunately, Jock's was still a bit far out and cut him off close to the leader. Quibi van Staden from All Out Angling also joined in on the action and fought this dusky whaler on a grinder 
spooled with a hundred pound braid. Corby made short work of it and being able to get this fish landed in under an hour. Just tipping the 200 kilo mark. A great achievement on the grinder setup. All in all, a majestical day. With this in Kirby's fish of well over 400 pounds, my dusky wader in excess of 500 pounds, and Kumaran with a staggering fish of well over 600 pounds. And to round off this beautiful morning, and short after Kirby, Philip also got stuck into a nice fish that turned out to be a Zambezi shark, or a bull shark, as some might refer to it. Also common with the sardines. What a perfect day in the sardine run. Well rounded off. And we were looking forward to the next morning as we could only do a morning session before Jock has to fly back to Cape Town. Unfortunately, this morning didn't produce any shark bites, but Philip was rewarded with a fantastic prodigal son, or cobia as some refer to it, just before they had to return home. Now guys, this is really special times in the sardine run, but I want to request everybody to fish responsible and make sure you use the right gear to successfully land this fish. Also the consideration of moving away from the crowds before you hook one of these bigger fish. Now this time of the year, during the annual sardine run, every morning is unpredictable as you never know what the ocean will offer today. During the sardine run you can have very tough days and not be able to find a bite. And other days it's a mixed bag or certain species that show up and you literally have to carry a bag with pretty much everything to be able to target whatever pops up today. While driving around we saw several pockets of sardines moving past just south of Sunridge Port. We also spotted some elephant tuna working some of these shoals. So everyone was excited getting baits in the back. Some of the shoals came in pretty close and I quickly rigged up a rod to throw a plug for the fish passing closer by. Some of the swords were pushed right into the bay and some actually washed out on the beach as predatory fish were feeding on them. After not having much luck on the plug, we quickly switched to spoon on the lighter gear as we noticed that several shad were around as well. We quickly got stuck into the shad using the spoon. Kumaran from the beach and I was throwing from the rocks. Almost every cast got hit. This time of the year the shad is excellent live bait and we quickly got a few together to put them out as the tide will push in. It doesn't matter how many fish you've caught in your life, catching shad with spoon on light tackle is always great fun. Behind us, we'll be fishing off the rock. Sardines washed into a, a little pool here. Yeah? Whole shoal of them. <laughs> That's amazing. 
There were a lot of shad now. We didn't see any other game fish. One Gary cutting flat in the back. But yeah, it looks like there can be quite a bit of action here. Sods coming out and bits and pieces everywhere. We quickly collected those live sods and put new fresh baits out immediately using the fresh shad and sardines we just got. Paulo Tellers is one of ASFN's newly appointed ambassadors. We are fortunate to have him with us and know Paulo will be a great benefit in sharing information and tips with you guys forward. Now everything looked perfect for a big fish and even a game fish but that's the sardine run you never can tell but still we had a great day with at least some shad a few for bait and some for the pan thank you for watching asfn fishing please subscribe to the channel as this helps us also hit the bell notification button to be notified every time we upload a video also please like the video